Okay, so welcome to Thanksgiving week. Uh, we have a sparse group, um, but what else is new? It's been a sparse group all semester, but it'll be even more sparse this week, probably even more so on, uh, on Wednesday. So for those of you that have already told me that you're gonna be gone on Wednesday, uh, that's fine. Not unexpected. Uh, usually it's about half, <laughs> half the numbers on Wednesday. Um, but that being said, what we're going to work on on Wednesday is your portfolios. We're going to go back and revisit them, add your new assignments, uh, and, and deal with that, give you some one-on-one -on -one desk critique and that sort of thing. Uh, works nicely for those of you that are away because you can do it on your own time and come back uh, with something. However, all that being said, it's important to recognize the semester is rapidly coming to a close. Um, usually when we hit Thanksgiving, there's not a lot of time left, which is correct. Um, we're on exercise 127 today. 128 will be on Wednesday. There's only going to be, I think, 131. So there's three more after. Uh, when we get back, so there's really not a lot of time. The last day of class is always just to touch up your portfolio day. Um, so we're really, we're coming down to it. Uh, there's still some stuff that I'd really like to show you in SketchUp um, so that you can, you can learn a lot about kind of how this comes together and how you can really make good collages and that sort of thing. Um, there are a variety of levels to which you can take SketchUp collaging. Um, in terms of how far you push it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to break it into manageable chunks as we go forward. That being said, I'm not going to do everything today. Uh, I'll save a little bit for when we do plans, and I'll save a little bit for when we do um, sections, and I'll save a little bit for when we do perspectives. Um, but all of the techniques we'll talk about over the next two, uh, two and a half weeks of class uh, will apply to any one of the views. So just because I'm doing an elevation today doesn't mean that it has to look exactly like the elevation I'm going to do. Uh, the idea here is that I'm really trying to show you how you can work with SketchUp and get something that doesn't look like a generic SketchUp model or, and, or, and or drawing. Uh, so the, the goal is certainly to, um, to make something that looks a little bit better, uh, so to speak. So uh, I have a, a sample cabin that I uh, created um, that I wanted to kind of, something that has a couple rooms in it and whatever. It does not, um, meet all of the requirements that you have, but it's something that I can work with uh, with enough detail so you can actually see something uh, as we work through it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if yours are more detailed than this, which is perfectly fine. Um, when you think about things that you want detail in, windows are a good thing to add detail. I really should have more detailed doors because um, they just don't look that attractive. Um, so you kind of think through in, in terms of how you're going to model. What we're going to do today is an exterior elevation uh, we're going to do that first, then when we come back from Thanksgiving, we'll do a plan, so you can see how I would cut a plan. Um, we will ultimately do a section, and we'll also do a perspective. So there's kind of four main views that we're talking about, um, with the idea being that each of those will be collaged and will look, will look very good. So um, what I want to do is I want to set up a, a view, and it's important to make sure that we save our scenes uh, whenever we do this, um, because we're going to really want to make sure that these views are repeatable over and over again. Um, because you may find that, oh, I didn't really like the style of that, I want to change something, or I updated my model and I don't really like what it used to look like and I want the new version of it. If you have the same scenes, you can use previous work that you've done in Photoshop, uh, just drop in the new images. So it's really important to get used to that. So since we're doing an elevation today, I'm going to go to the camera menu and I'm going to go to standard views and I'm going to pick generally assuming you built your model on an orthogonal axis. Uh, generally we're going to pick the front view, um, but sometimes you can pick the, the back or the right side, etc. So now when I pick that front view, notice that everything is still in perspective. These still have a vanishing point. It's actually a one point perspective, right? I don't want that. I want a true elevation. So I'm also going to go to camera and I'm going to change from perspective to be parallel projection. And when I change to parallel projection, you'll see that this now looks like an elevation view of this particular building. That's what we're after, okay? Now, if I don't like this particular view of my building, I can, of course, go to um, my camera, standard views, and we could say, look at the right side view, okay? That's not exactly the most attractive in the world. Uh, let's go standard views, let's look at the left side, okay? Let's go standard views, we can look at the back. And you can see that I've gone through kind of each of my elevations. I'm going to stick with the front because it kind of has the most detail on it. Pick the side that looks the best uh, for you as well. So we're going to go to standard views front. 
and it's going to look something like this. Now I want to make sure that it fits kind of nicely in my screen. So something like that is probably pretty good as an elevation. And once I have this set up, I'm going to go to my um, window menu and I'm going to go to scenes. And you'll see that I already have some scenes that have been set up here uh, from previous models, but we're going to create a new elevation view. So I'm going to click on this little plus sign, and when I click on that plus sign, it's going to say, um, save, we'll click save as a new style for right now, create scene, okay, and this comes up with scene six, and I'm going to double click on it to rename it, or excuse me, I'm going to right click on it, say rename scene, and we'll call this um, front front elevation, oops, helps if I press return after I type, right? There it is. Okay, now the advantage here is anytime that I, I start to play around with my views and I want to go back to it, I can double click on it and it's always going to take me right back to my front elevation. Okay, um, I did notice that I have a little box that, let me, let me switch into the perspective view here really fast. Oh, this is a sectional view, never mind. Really? All right, all right. Give me just a second. Okay, I have this little cube that's showing up in my model. I'm going to use that later on, so I'm just going to get rid of it just a holdover of something that I had from previous modeling. Okay, so I'm here in my um, front elevation. I've saved that scene, which is really critical, uh, and now it's going to be a matter of getting my views uh, set up for my export. And I have a variety of views that I'm going to want, and you saw this a little bit last class uh, when I did the Francis Ching house, uh, or I guess two classes ago, um, and I'm going to go through and set up uh, kind of several different views for export. These are based on the um, SketchUp 4.4 uh, tutorial, so if you want to go back and, and reference that, you can. Uh, I've been working on the website, and I'm struggling to fix it. I actually bought a brand new server, so it just hasn't migrated there. So I recognize it's really slow, but it is there, uh, and it will be fixed probably over Thanksgiving break. At least I hope so. Um, but if we go to tutorials, SketchUp, and this styles for Photoshop 4.4, it will walk you through these exact steps. it will load. Okay, So first thing that I want to do is I want kind of a basic line drawing view of my uh, model here. And I'm going to go to the um, window and then styles. There it is. And when I have the styles view open, I like to have them over here on the right. Just somehow it, it works a little bit better for me. Uh, and we're going to start with kind of a basic style set. And I think it's under the assorted. Assort nope. You have to kind of look through here. It's under default. Uh, it's right here. It's hidden line. And I'll click on it. And what it gives, oops. Sorry, I still have that section plane showing. There we go. It gives me kind of a very basic uh, line drawing of my particular building. Uh, under the view, we can turn off certain things. Like the axes, I have a little red dotted line. It's probably hard for you guys to see. Uh, on the projector, but that's going to be annoying down the road. So I'm going to turn off the axes, uh, and I'm also going to turn off the guides. Uh, and it's going to leave this very, very plain, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so it's just a very plain line drawing. I'm going to go to File and then Export 2D Graphic, and we'll make sure that this goes into the 127 folder. Create a new subfolder here. All of And I like to add underscore lines so that I know this is just the basic line version. Um, now, one of the important things to, to note is under options, if I click on options, I have the ability to set the size of this image. Uh, and one of the, the, the things about it, we've got a couple variables here. 
the first variable is we have to think about how large we ultimately want to print. Uh, printing resolution is 300 dots per inch. So if we take the size, like if we wanted an 8.5 by 11, if we took the 11 and multiply it by 300, we get 3300. Right? The 3300 would be the number of pixels we'd want to print it this large. Does that kind of make sense for how I went through it? Same thing happens if you're rendering in Rhino or whatever. It just gives you a baseline. So in reality, I'm going to change my view size uh, at least to be at least um, 3300. Oh, I have to uncheck this views view size here. 3300, right? That's for an 8.5 by 11. If I wanted to go to 11 by 17, we can jump this up to 6600. Okay? SketchUp does have a limit. I'm assuming it doesn't crash on me here. SketchUp does have a limit. It will only let you go up to 10,000. That's the max um, for a particular view. So just something to be aware of. Um, so that would be for a JPEG, right? And so we'll leave it at 3,300 for right now. That's fine. I'll go ahead and say OK. We also, because this is SketchUp Pro, have the ability to, instead of outputting a JPEG, and I want to point this out because it's something that's new and I didn't actually discover until relatively recently, uh, is that I can also go to a PDF file. And if I pick PDF and I go to options, I have some other options. Uh, and this is particularly relevant if we want to do something that is, in fact, to scale. right? Uh, so I can say that what I want is right, the scale to be 1 inch equals how many feet. So let's say I wanted it to be a quarter, um, so a quarter inch. So let me say 0 0.25 um, is equal to 1 foot. Right? And it will tell me the size of the image that I'm going to be creating. If I switch to inches, it'll convert to inches, I think. That's really annoying. OK, so it's keeping this in, it's 1.5 feet by 0.7 feet. So it's going to fit on an 11 by 17-ish, OK? Uh, so a couple things that are important, though. Uh, we have the ability to adjust um, some of these. So we're going to show profiles. Uh, we're going to auto width, or we could actually specify what the width of the lines would be, right? So we have a few more options when we're exporting a PDF. So I just wanted to point this out. We'll explore this more when we get to the plan view. We'll do one that's to scale in the plan view, but I at least wanted to point it out to you. Okay? So I'm going to switch back to the JPEG because we're just going to work on JPEGs today. And I'll go to options. It is 3300. That's good. Uh, we want this to be on the best quality. I'll say OK. And so this is cabin lines, and I'm going to go ahead and export. All right, so I've done the first one. I can flip back here to double check. Right, that's the first one, the hidden lines. Right. The next one is going to be um, hidden lines, but then we're going to show X-ray. So I'm going to look in the styles win window here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to click on the Edit tab. And when I click on the Edit tab, I have several different options that I can work through. I have edge settings. I have face settings. Right. I have background settings. And basically, this is how you can customize whatever it is that you're seeing. And so for right now, I'm going to click on the um, face style here, and then I'll click on the x-ray button. And what this does is it shows me a lightened version of what's happening behind uh, the face of my building. And sometimes this is nice to have. Sometimes it's not, but it's something that we can play around with. So transparency quality, we can say nicer, just to make it a little bit better. And then I'll go ahead and go right back to File, Export, 2D Graphic. And this is going to be cabin x-ray. Perfect. So we can turn off the x-ray and we're back to the hidden line mode. Uh, and now we'll jump back over and check what our next thing is. So we did x-ray. Next one is going to be the, just the shadows. Or excuse me, just the guides. So let me go to View, Guides. I don't even know if I have any guides, but we'll take a quick look here. Turn off Edges and Profiles. Yeah, I don't have any guides, so it doesn't do me any good. Okay. Some people work a lot with guides. It's useful to have them as kind of background um, data. 
I don't have them, so we don't need to, to export those. So we'll turn those back off again. Jump over. Okay, so we did the guides. Okay, next one we're going to do the shadows. So I'm going to go to my uh, window and then shadows. This brings up the shadow settings. And I'm also going to go to the view menu and turn on shadows. All right, so I can see it. Now, because I have the flexibility to choose whatever time of day or year I want, I'm going to use these sliders and adjust the shadows to look the way I want them to look, depending on uh, the particular view. All right, so that one's kind of interesting. It's got a little bit of a shine through this window. Yeah, I kind of like it, so we'll go with it. Okay? Again, it's, it's up to me what I pick for my, my shadows. Once I have it, though, I'm going to continue over here, but I'm going to turn off edges and profiles so I have just the shadow showing. And it's important to make sure you turn off uh, everything except the shadows so you have just the shadows when you do the collaging in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File and then Export 2D Graphic. And we'll call this Shadows. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and click Export. Notice that every time the settings in the JPEG are exactly the same. The view is exactly the same, so these are going to line up nicely in Photoshop. I made sure that I haven't um, zoomed in or zoomed out or changed anything in any way. All right, so I have this. Looks pretty good. Uh, we can turn back on our edges and our profiles. And I'll jump back. All right, we just did that one. The last one is going to be the pen gray. So I have to go to select, and it's going to be under sketchy edges. And it's always really hard to find blue pen, pen gray. Uh, and hold on a second. Let me turn view to adjust a few of these. There we go. Okay, so this just is a little bit more of a casual look for this. I'll go ahead and go to File and then Export 2D Graphic. And we can call this pen gray. Now click export. Now just because I suggested pen gray doesn't mean you couldn't do a different view. Uh, the other thing that can happen is sometimes when you export them, um, the, the lines end up a lot thinner than your, you had before. Uh, you can adjust by going to the edit uh, and changing the thickness of the lines if we wanted to. Okay. The other factor is that we can also pick one of the other exports. So um, I think this is an airbrush with endpoints. Right? It's, it's a lot chunkier right now, but when we do the export, it may turn out uh, good. So let me turn these off. Uh, and I'm doing this as an additional one, just so that you can see that you don't have to stick with the one that I chose. Right? It might look good to have one that's, that's a little bit different. So let me go to File, Export, 2D Graphic. And we'll call this Airbrush. And I'll go ahead and click it. Oops. Helps if I... Export, 2D graphic. Airbrush, and I'll go ahead and click Export. Now there's one other view that I don't mention on the, the previous sheet uh, that sometimes is useful, and I'll go back to my default styles here. Sometimes it's nice to have something with just kind of a basic colored background. So once again, let me turn off these. Get there. Obviously, this happens to me too when it decides to crash. Okay, so I have a view like this. The reason that I picked this is because I have a nice consistent gray color for the ground and a nice consistent blue cover color for the sky. Uh, I can use those to my advantage when I'm selecting color regions in Photoshop. So sometimes it's useful to have something like that. I don't really care so much what the building itself looks like. Uh, I could go as far as uh, turning off the edges altogether um, so that I'm really just dealing with the colors, not the edges, uh, which might not be a bad style. Uh, let me see if I can do anything else here. Right, I could even take it one step further like this. 
uh, where I have just the color in the background, much harder for you to see, and the color of the ground, right? This is all I really care about. So I'll go ahead and go to File, Export, 2D Graphic, and we'll call this Background. Now I'll go ahead and click Export. So you can really mess around with these views to get just the right uh, combination. Once I have these views set uh, in SketchUp, I'm going to jump over into Photoshop and I'm going to start to assemble them. And we've already done this once uh, because we did the, the Francis Ching cube house and you brought them in. We're going to do the same thing again. So I'll go to File and then Open. And I'm going to pick my first. We'll start with just the lines. It's usually my default view. So uh, if I press Control-0, we can see it. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the lines are thinner than they were on my screen. That's part of the export process. Um, so having them a little thinner isn't the worst thing in the world. I'll go to File and then Place, and I'm going to start bringing in each of these others. Uh, so we did the pen. Uh, now we'll do the x-ray. Go ahead and Place. Now, if I did this correctly, each one should line up right on top of the next, which is the idea. So I'll go ahead and say OK, and then I'll go to File, and then Place. And I'll repeat this for each of those. So I did x-rays, we'll do shadows. Okay. Place. Okay. Place. Okay, so I have each of those brought in, and now I'm going to go ahead and start combining them. So let's start with the first one here, the x-ray view. Um, it looks very similar to what, what the background view is, uh, but I want to change this to be multiply. So the layer blending mode is going to be multiply, and we'll add it together. Next one here is the shadows. We'll change the layer blending mode again to multiply, and we'll have the shadows. Next one is pen gray. And I'm going to obviously keep working my way up each time going to multiply. Uh, except for this background, actually, we'll just jump the background um, down here. And let me turn the airbrush on. And again, it'll be to multiply. And so as we stack all of these up, you can see how much darker the lines are getting each time we add to it. So it's getting darker and darker. This airbrush might be too much. We'll have to kind of sort that one out uh, at the end. It was kind of the optional uh, last piece of it. Okay, so let's start to work through each of these uh, in a little bit more detail. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the background. Right now the background is still locked. So let me right click and say layer from background to create an unlocked layer. And that'll be our layer zero. Um, and then let's start to work with the background uh, and how that part of this would work. Okay, so right now I have the, the two-tone background, I'm sorry that it's not as obvious. Uh, let me go ahead and make it a little bit more obvious. What I want to do is I want to select a color range. Because this is a consistent light blue color, I can go to Select Color Range, and I can pick this color. And Photoshop does a really excellent, quick job of highlighting just this part of the image, right? Um, so that you can see it on the screen a little bit better. Go ahead and <coughs> okay. So this does happen sometimes. Uh, these are all brought in as smart objects because I did the placement of them. Uh, a lot of times when you go to perform the edit, it's going to ask you to rasterize the images, uh, which I went ahead and said okay to. Notice the little placed icon goes away once it's rasterized, uh, and then I will paint this in black so that it a little bit easier to see what's going on. Okay? Just trying to make that higher contrast so you can see what's the background. Okay, so now I need to go find an, a background image that I'm going to use in my scene. So let me go to the internet and let me go to images. Uh, actually, let's do search.creativecommons.org. And we'll hope that the internet at large works a little bit better. 
And so I'll go ahead and search Flickr, and I'm going to search for Yosemite South Meadow, which is where um, our building is going to take place. And it would be nice if I had more images than just those. I know I've done this before and found better images. Let's just do Yosemite Meadow. Okay, and so as we go through, we're, we're looking for some kind of a backdrop, right? This one's probably not too bad, so as I start to look through, I usually right click and say open in a new tab as I look, uh, as I go along, right? This one's not bad. Right, that one's not quite the right perspective. You know, this one could be okay. Uh, now, in reality, uh, one of the things that's important to point out is you would, in all likelihood, have gone to the site to do a site visit so you could do your site analysis. There's where it's important to take the pictures. You can use your own pictures. Uh, part of the reason I picked a site like uh, Yosemite South Meadow is because it's so photographed, we can find photos of that location or photos that are very close to it. Um, so in reality, you take your own images, but for, for the sake of what we're doing, we're going to find mm -hmm. images um, online. That one could be interesting. Right? And so I have a few of these that have, that have opened up. Right? This one's not too bad. Um, my building would be a little bit too far down in that one. Well, this one's pretty good. Right? That one could be okay. Uh, and so sometimes we might need to actually save several images as we, as we kind of test them and see how they look. Uh, there's, if it's downloadable, there should be a little download link. It's an arrow with a line underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and it's going to say, hopefully original, which is a nice large size. We're going to download that original file. Let me go ahead and try this one. There's the original. We'll download that one. This one's not so big, so we might not be too happy with it. And we'll download this one as well. Again, pretty good size. Uh, we'll let those download. Let me go ahead and show them in their folder. And since there's so many downloads here, let me go by date modified so that I can pick these as our example set. I'm going to copy them and put them into my flash drive inside my folder. So we know that they're here. Okay, and so they're all here. They've been downloaded, uh, and we're going to work with some of these and see how uh, see how they turn out. Okay, so I'm going to jump back into my scene here, and I'm going to go to File, and then Place, and I'm going to try out one of these images. And if I want to see which one I'm doing, I can do uh, the thumbnail, so I can kind of take a look here. Yeah, this one could be okay. Go ahead and place. Okay, and so the, the image comes in, right? I'm going to press Control minus to zoom out a little bit, and then I'm going to go to Edit and then Transform, or it's actually on Free Transform, which is fine. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, I'll hold down Shift while I'm doing it. And the ground can be somewhere probably right about there. But we'll see. Right. You go ahead and make this one a little bit bigger. Right. We'll adjust the ground. Something like that works. Now, one of the challenges here, of course, is that a lot of my image is getting cut off, right? Because I don't have the height in the export. That's fine for right now. Um, we can go back and we can get a little bit more data um, or change the the canvas size if we wanted a little bit more. But let's see how it turns out. I'll go ahead and say OK for this size, right? And what I need to do is I need to make this image um, so that I don't see, uh, basically I need to make a mask for this image. Okay? Uh, so let me jump back to my background here. Oops, sorry. Turn this off. There's my background layer. Let me make the selection of this background. Right? Let me go back to my image here. 
and we can create a mask just like you've done before. Right? I'll click on add layer mask and I've cut out so that I can see this um, image. Right? Now the advantage here is I can move this around still a little bit. Let me untie those for a second. Right? So that I can get just about the right bit of grass showing. Okay? Something like that. And we can start to see the background. Okay? Now, um, I have that, so let's go ahead and turn off the background. And you can start to see that I have, um, when I turn on my foreground, I have what my elevation looks like, and I have my photo background. Make sense so far? Okay. Now, I really need a little bit of uh, ground, because my ground is stark white, and it's a little bit too, uh, too strong right now. So let me go ahead and create a new layer, and I'm going to work on this layer to build uh, the ground. Uh, and I'll start with, let me press Control-0 so we can see everything. And I'll start with just a rectangular marquee, um, right like that. And then we'll use the paintbrush tool, if I can find it, there it is, uh, to just fill this in in black. Now, if black is too strong, you could fill it in in a kind of a dark gray or a light gray. It depends on the look that you're going for. Um, see, if I wanted to change the color, right, I can obviously type in a percentage. So I can go 0, 0, 0. Uh, I don't know, let's do a 60% gray. Say OK. And then I could fill in the ground with a 60% gray. Obviously, it changes how, how harsh this is. Uh, it needs to be some value. To me, that's a little light, so maybe I'll bump this up. Let's try a 75. I'll paint that in. A little bit darker. Something like that. Okay. Now, if we look closely <coughs> at one side or the other, Right? Oops, sorry about that. Right? It's perfectly flat. And in reality, it's never perfectly flat. Right? So what I want to do is I want to kind of uh, make this so that it's not quite so flat. Uh, and I can do that by just drawing. And I'm going to just use the regular lasso here. Uh, I can either slope up, right? Something like this. Right? I make that little selection. I'll use my brush and we'll paint that in right, to create a little bit of a hill. Let's go to the other side and I'll do the same thing over here. Right, This time maybe I'll go down. And there it is. Right, I'll start right there at the corner and we'll go down a little bit. Something like that. Uh, and this time I'll press delete so that it goes away. Now here's a problem, right? My my image doesn't go far enough. Okay? But if I come back to my mask, remember we did it with a mask, so I can use my white paintbrush on the mask layer itself right here and I can paint in the rest of that because I did it with a mask. Okay? So let me go ahead and press control 0 so we can start to see the whole thing. It doesn't seem quite as stark anymore. Right. In reality, I think I want to adjust this because I don't really like that side. So let's go back to my background. And I'm just going to go to my eraser. Right, and we'll erase off a little bit there. Yeah, something like that's not bad. Okay, so. I now have a little bit of ground that's been established uh, with my elevation view, like that. To me, the background is probably a little bit strong. So let me take the background. Oops, sorry. Take the background, uh, and I'm going to turn down the opacity a little bit so it feels a little bit more like a drawing. Uh, and that's one of the risks whenever you do this kind of photo collage is that the, the background photo can overpower the drawing itself, right? So I'll tone that background photo down just a little bit, right? Something like that. So I have a little bit lighter, and then let's start to layer up the rest of my my views. So let's turn on the X-ray view. Um, I like having a little bit of X-ray of, of what's going on. It might be too strong, but let's wait till we get all of the the drawing put together here. Uh, we're going to deal with the shadows next. We'll turn on the pen gray, and maybe or maybe not to the airbrush. Okay, so the x-ray still is feeling a little bit strong, so let me turn down the x-ray a little bit. I don't 
don't even know if you guys can see it anymore. Can you see it? Could you see it in the beginning? Not really. <laughs> I can see it a lot better uh, on my screen. So I'm going to turn it, turn it down a little bit. You know, some, something in that neighborhood is probably pretty good. Okay, so let's look at the shadows. Right. I'd like to edit the shadows a little bit. Um, they're a little bit flat, so I'm going to do the dodge and burn layer, just like we've done before. You just did that in your uh, two exercises ago. So let me go ahead and go to Layer, New Layer. And this is going to be an overlay mode, and I'm going to fill it with a 50% gray, and we can call it Dodge and Burn for Shadows. I'll say OK. So there's the dodge and burn. I want it to affect only the shadows itself. Uh, so I'll press Control alt g which applies this layer only to the layer directly below it. I have no idea where to get that from the menu structure, but that's the key command to do it. Uh, so it's Control alt g uh, I've done that. It's applying just to the shadows layer. Now I can use my dodge and burn tools, which are right here. Let's do burn. Again, I'm on this layer. Let's increase the size of my brush slightly. And we'll just give a little bit of darkening to the edges here, a little bit down here, in the corner. A little bit to the underside. Okay. Make this Again, I'm using the bracket keys to make these adjustments. Let's darken this up a little bit. Right, so it adds just a little bit more to it. Uh, if I turn it off, you can see that they were kind of flat. If I turn it on, I have a little bit more depth to the shadows, uh, which kind of, I'm faking it, but it helps, it helps them look a little bit better. Uh, if it's too much, Altogether, remember we can of course adjust the opacity of the shadows so that they start to go away. Uh, and this is something that's worth editing uh, once you print, do a test print, see how it looks. Because sometimes with full shadows, something just appears too heavy once it's printed. Generally, the grays end up much heavier. Uh, so we might dump that down just a little bit, and that's even more reason to add a little bit more of the texture to those particular shadows. Uh, I can use the dodge tool, which lightens uh, on this layer. Make this a little bigger. If I wanted to lighten up parts of the shadows, right? I don't know that that necessarily looks the best, so we're going to undo it. But I wanted to at least point it out. Okay, so I have that done. I have the pen gray on. The last thing was that airbrush, which really punches out the drawing a lot. I don't know that I like it. It might be too heavy-handed. Um, I could adjust the opacity of it. Um, oops, wrong. So that it's not, it's adding a little bit, but not quite as much weight. Um, something like that is probably pretty good. Okay. So I now have a pretty nice elevation that I've worked through and established. Okay. We will talk in future lectures about applying textures to the walls and and adding artificial lighting and that kind of thing. Um, but I don't want to go too far with it. Uh, the one last thing that I will um, point out, just in case you're interested in doing it as kind of an option, uh, if I were to put this on a presentation board, uh, it would feel like it's very much framed. Right? Sometimes you want an elevation like this to fade out at the top. Uh, we can do the same kind of a fade out in the mask here. Uh, so I'm going to jump back to the mask. I'm actually going to use this background temporarily. Um, to do a selection. So let me go ahead and make my selection. Oops. Always easier to make the selection on that temporary background layer. And then we'll jump up here. And we're going to work on the mask. Inside of this, I'm going to do a little bit of a fade. Uh, so I'm going to go to my gradient tool, which is underneath the paint bucket. There it is. Uh, and so I want this to go to uh, black, from white to black. And I forget whether I drag uh, up or down. So I'm going to hold down shift to keep it consistent. And I'm going to start wherever the, um, the the beginning, right where I want the, the fade not to, to happen to wherever I want it to be completely transparent. 
uh, and it ends right there at the top. Uh, the advantage of something like this is that I'm able to fade it out so that it kind of goes away at the top, right? which can be very useful uh, long term in a presentation drawing because you can put a plan above it and it doesn't look like it's framed within uh, an image itself. Okay? So that's something that's optional, but I did want to point it out. I will, of course, show that again uh, as we get a little bit further down the road. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the, the way this result has turned out. I'm going to go ahead at this point and save it. I'm going to save it in two different ways. The first way, I'm just going to do File Save. Uh, and this is going to be the Photoshop version. And so it's a cabin. And we'll call this Front I can type elevation um, and I'm going to add that this is the, the first version of this uh, and so it'll be a PSD I'll go ahead and click save all of that's good let me go to file save for web now and this is going to be the image that I'll post there we go uh, I can press control zero to see what it looks like there it is uh, JPEG high is perfect let me go ahead and click save And it would help if I was in my flash drive. Here we go. Twenty-seven. All. There it is. So we see all the previous versions that are in there. Uh, we can actually switch this down to uh, list view. Okay. Uh, and I want to save this cabin front elevation. And I'll go ahead and click save. And I now have my image complete. Okay. So this is what you're going to do today. Uh, I'm asking you to do it in this style. Don't worry about adding, uh, you know, siding or anything on the building. Uh, just do it as a line drawing with a photo in the background with ground below it uh, and kind of layer it up with a little bit of shadow. Okay? If you get to do the, uh, the transparency gradient, you're welcome to, but if you don't get there, it's, it's okay too. Okay? Any questions at this point? Okay, if you get lost, let me know and we'll, we'll work through it because I think this is a really important skill to, to continue to develop. Okay?